part of my passion is not just social media, but it's really assisting business owners like each and every one of you and helping you to get your brand and your name out there, okay? A few disclaimers. Bill said that we shouldn't harm and hurt each other. <laughs> I have put this, I've had, this is like my 20th or 25th workshop or seminar, right? There's about 30, 35 people here. From my experience, there may be one of you that actually implements what I'm gonna tell you. And I'm gonna give you everything from A to Z on how to do it. I don't have the secret sauce. I don't hide anything back from you. If you really want to learn all this, you can go to Google and YouTube and learn all this if you want to take half a day and do it, right? But only one or two of you are really gonna implement this, right? So I'm changing up my strategy today, right? I wanna hurt you, right? I want you guys to say Sean was a jerk. I didn't like that guy, but I'm actually gonna start implementing what I learned today, right? Honestly, I really don't care if any of you really like me after today, but if I could touch maybe instead of one or two of you and make that three or four or five of you, and you actually put this together, and you have a good 2019 and a 2020, and I have a little bit to do with that, then I did my job today, right? So please, take notes. We're gonna have a QA. and a I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag, otherwise it's gonna stress everybody out. In, in a couple weeks, on the 27th, we're gonna have three 90-minute uh, follow-ups, right? So if you're serious about this and you actually implement some stuff today and you want to follow up and see how you're doing and get more information, we're gonna offer three 90-minute follow-ups, right, for you on the 27th to kind of follow up and teach you a lot. I can't teach you everything in an hour, I can't, right? But if you start to put some of this together and you're serious on the 27th, then, you know, we'll do it then, okay? Oh, by the way, it's free. And it's free, yeah. Actually, I was thinking everybody would do a potluck, <laughs> right? So, anyway, it, it's all free. I'm not asking a dime from anybody, okay? My time is very important, okay? You'll see that I've kind of grown my business just a little bit in the last three years, but I'm not asking a dime from anybody, okay? None of this really matters to you except for this part right here. Before I got in my business, I was a Kia, um, I was a social media analyst for Kia Motors America, right? I was in front of their Twitter and their Facebook for 40 hours a week, just looking at stuff, taking care of some issues, doing this, doing that, doing that. I was on a phone call with their ad agency and their social media agency every Monday morning. Did I have anything to do with the creative part of it? No. But I started taking notes, right? And I started seeing what a lot of the small businesses here in Tucson and around the state of Arizona do, and knowing, well, very, very few people are doing it correctly, okay? So that's when I became kind of passionate about assisting small businesses. The big thing here, oh, another disclaimer, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything, okay? It may seem like it. I may refer to some of my clients and some experiences like that. I don't want any of you guys as clients, I don't. You know, if I do, then great, but I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm giving you information not to tell you how great I am, but just to help you so you don't make the same mistakes, okay? But I do have, happen to have 50 clients in 13 or 12 different states. So I guess I know what I'm doing, right? That's my credibility part right there, okay? Why social media, right? Does anybody have their cell phone more than the hand, uh, arm links away from them? Does anybody? What do you do in the first thing when you wake up in the morning? You grab your phone, right? There's a funny story. I, didn't, I don't think I even told you this. I told Joe this, I think. About three or four weeks ago, wake up, I grab my phone, and I see an event, right? Someone's talking about social media, and there's like 30, 40, 50 people already interested in going. I'm like, that's cool. Someone else is actually getting out in the community and going to help the small business owners. I'm like, wonder who's putting it on? And it was me. <laughs> it was this one. <laughs> so I had no idea we were doing this until I saw this on Facebook, MJ. Thank you. Yeah. So everybody's attention is on her phone. How many hours a day is the average American on her or his phone? The average American. Hmm? Every day, I am, because I have to be. Five. Five hours a day. How many hours of sleep do you get? About seven, eight. So if you're waking hours, we're spending about a third of our time on our phone, <laughs> right? That's great for me, right? But think about that. Five hours a day, a third of your waking time, the average American is on your phone. Half of that time is on what? Social media. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, right? Where's your presence in that two and a half hours of time? 
Oh, your business presence. Do you have a presence? This is one of those times where I kind of hurt you a little bit, <laughs> right? Okay. Every day, or every week, how many people post two or three times a week? Yeah. To business or social? Business. We're talking just business here. One or two. Right? One or two times a week. Less than one or two times a week. But yet, everybody's attention is on our phone, right? 20, 25 years ago, when we did have to promote and advertise our business, what did we do? Radio, billboards, TV, whatever, right? But even as you're driving around, on, if you're driving, you should be paying attention to your road. But if you're in the passenger side, what's the passionate person doing? They're on their phone. We're not looking at billboards anymore. We just came back from Phoenix. Did we notice any billboards? No. No. One, because we're talking a lot. But even if you, we weren't, we we're on our phone. Everybody's attention is right here. Is your business here? Am I hurting you a little bit yet? Good. What's your brand? What are you trying to tell everybody? I like asking this question. What is your brand? What's the definition of your brand? There's no wrong answer. What's your definition of your brand? I have one. Hmm. The Huntress, targeting your home. That's good, that's right. What's the definition of a brand? Not your brand, but brand. What's the definition of a brand? Or brand. A brand, yeah, a brand. brand. Yeah. When you think of Nike, what do you think? Right, right. High quality, right. How you represent the business? Right, right. When I think of brand is like when I walk out of here and you guys are talking about me, what everybody's gonna say about me. Right? The guy's gonna say I actually dressed up today. <laughs> I hated it. I went out yesterday and bought this outfit for you guys today. <laughs> right? I'm it's my it's it's the whole thing is my brand. I wanna be in the T shirt that says hustle, blue jeans and a pair of Nikes, right? On, when I display my brand on my social media, I'm talking about entrepreneurship, motivation, I'm showing people where I'm at, I'm showing people I'm up late working, whether I am or not, <laughs> right? But I also do not show, and the rumor has it, that I love craft beer. No. Really. But do you see that on my business page? No. So when you talk about your brand, social media, like MJ said, it, it's about your branding and the marketing versus sales and transactional, right? And there is a part we're gonna to get to a little more of the sales transactional part right now, but 90% of your day-to-day -day stuff should be talking about your brand and providing value and information, okay? Is there anything more cost-effective right now when you invest 100 bucks a month into anything? Could you go to the radio station and say, hey, I got 100 bucks, put me, some, put me on some radio ads? What would they do to you? <laughs> Can you go to TV, right. When, when's the last TV commercial you, you, you saw? Geico with the guy running the track. Yeah. Is, is, do we have any other answers though? <coughs> right, and why not? Because we TiVo everything, we watch Netflix, right? The only time I see commercials, and I don't, the only reason I do is because I watch my Cowboys win. Yes. Right? <laughs> But other than that, I'm watching all the new series, I'm on YouTube, I'm on whatever, right? It's very rare that we even see a TV commercial these days, or actually listen to it. What about radio ads? I put on my Pandora or I'm making phone calls when I'm on the phone. Again, where's everybody's attention is at? When's that opportunity, right? I don't think it's on radio or TV or anything, and you can't go to them with $100 a month and say, make me a commercial. Right? So, what's the most cost effective thing you can do? It's Facebook. Accessibility. The biggest thing that I learned in Kia, every day I would get either a direct message or a private message from somebody who just bought their Kia Soul, right? Hey, I just bought a Kia Soul. What kind of gas do I put in my car? I get that question every day. How do I use my Bluetooth? You know, how come I don't have a spare tire? You guys are idiots, right? <laughs> Accessibility, being accessible, being, you know, having, instead of, we're not always picking up the phone these days, right? We're going through these social media channels and asking those types of questions, right? Now, let's say you don't have a Facebook page, but your competitor does. Can they ask you those questions that they're wondering about your real estate or about Legal Shield, right? Can they ask that, right? 20, 25 years ago, if you went to a website and the company didn't have that website, were they legitimate? 
today, it's, if you don't have a Facebook page, but your competitor does, who's more legitimate, right? I built my business from nothing in three years to 50 plus clients in 13 different states from shaking hands, kissing babies, and my social media. That is it. I had negative $7 in my pocket at one time to what I'm doing now because I shook hands, kissed babies, and I got 27,000 followers on my social media, period, right? How many people have been in this business for more than three years, right? If I can get 20 plus thousand followers in three years and I'm worrying about everybody else's social media, you don't think you can do the same for yourself. How many of those followers did I buy? Zero, right? I have an office downtown. I'm going to tell this story. I have an office downtown, right? And there's a marketing company right across from me, right? <laughs> I went to their Instagram. They have like 16 posts. And they got like 1,200 followers, right? I was like, God, who's following these people after only 16 posts? 1,200 followers? Are you serious? So I go to their followers. About 80% of them are women outside the country with different names with the same profile. <laughs> All right, so someone goes to their agency and they, they market themselves as we're a Fortune 500 marketing agency, or they go to little old me and they look at our followers and they look at my website. Who are they more apt to follow? Or who are they more apt to call? They say, hey, I need your help. <coughs> Probably me, just a guess, right? Why Facebook? MJ already kind of talked about this because there's two billion followers on it. There's two billion accounts. Everybody's on Facebook, right? Even the older generation is on Facebook, and even people that work at Raytheon throughout the day, if Raytheon may be part of your clients, what do they do? They go home and go on Facebook, right? I had a client, again, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. He didn't have a cell phone, but he knew it's like, this is where people's mm -hmm. attention is at. I don't get it, I never want a cell phone. I don't want to get on Facebook but I know my business needs to have that presence on there. Two billion with a B. Yeah. All right, so general strategies, right? And again, there are those 90 minute sessions we're gonna have in a few weeks. I'm gonna throw a lot at you in the next 45 minutes. We're gonna have a Q&A, but if you don't get it all, it's okay, all right? General strategies, what do you wanna do in your day-to-day -day posting, okay? You wanna provide value and information on your Facebook page. Right? You want to position yourself as a leader, not in just in your industry, but in your community. Right? Most of the people here besides the, is there anybody else not associated with like financial stuff? What do you do? Um, so I work at the health department and I run social media for a healthy Pima. Awesome. So really? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so let's take you as an example, right? What kind of good value and information can you provide if that's your initiative? What can, you, what can you post about? Uh, we post about our different task forces in terms of just health and wellness in general, but we have specific task forces within Healthy Pima, like um, tackling diabetes, uh, substance misuse, mental awesome. health, right. um, activate, activate. So you're providing value and information for people to stay healthy, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to see it necessarily, right? Right? There's a few people in real estate, financial services, right? You want to provide value and information of what, you're, what it's going to be like as a first-time home buyer, right? Or what it's going to be like, I don't have a retirement guy, right? You're going to provide value, what to expect the first time that I have a meeting with a guy and what to expect, how, how I'm not going to be scared out of my mind to do so, or the different types of mutual funds. You're going to provide that value and information and position yourselves as a leader in the industry. There's a lot of content out there that you could borrow, but if you could write your own like mini blogs once or twice a month, and we're gonna get a little tangent off Facebook, that's even more powerful, okay? One trick that I do every once in a while is that I'll write about my failures and successes on my LinkedIn, okay? This is gonna make sense in a little bit. And I, on my LinkedIn, which I got about 7,500 connections on LinkedIn, I write that little article with a headline. So all my connections say that I saw this article that I wrote, whether it's about social media or entrepreneurship, whatever it is, right? I post that article. And then once you post that article on LinkedIn, there's a little button right here, blue with an F on it. It's Facebook. 
you can share that to your business page. So that's a great way you could write a little three or four, five paragraph article or blog, whatever you want to call it, write it on LinkedIn, then share it to your Facebook page. So it looks like an official article that you wrote, right? It'll look just like an article if you shared one from entrepreneur.com or success.com or Forbes.com, right? I get so much response when I do that. So much engagement off LinkedIn and Facebook when I do that. Next to me, in my office downtown, there's a guy who specializes in very, very specific cases related to medical insurance, right? He wrote an article one time, six years ago on his LinkedIn. He comes in one day, Sean, I wrote this article six years ago about how specific I am on my LinkedIn, blah, 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 blah. Someone in Kansas found that I has the same situation, right? He was holding a check for $25,000. They sent me a check today, so now they're a client, right? So the people that are searching for your businesses, there's so many things with Legal Shield that you can do, right? About how, because so many people think that it's just kind of narrow, but you guys have so many other services that you can help out on, right? Write about some of the instances, right? Write about some of the special cases that you've handled. If you're working with the upper one percent, don't name your clients, obviously, but write about it, right? If you wrote something today and it got paid $25,000 six years from now, how many people would write it? <laughs> no brainer, right? Who would you do business with, right? Who would you do business with? That's, how, that's who you want to present on your, your Facebook page. This is the biggest thing here. You got really good handwriting, by the way. Yes, you do. Yeah, it's, it's legible. <laughs> this is the biggest thing that if you leave here today, I hope you think I'm a jerk. I hope I hurt you a little bit. But if you remember this right here, I don't care what business you, you're in, what you do, if you leave here with a media company first mentality, you're gonna win, right? I'm a media company slash realtor. I'm a media company slash financial advisor. I'm a media company slash volleyball tournament coordinator, <laughs> right? If you put your presence on social media just a little bit ahead of what you actually do, you're gonna win. That's what I did, I'm living proof of it, right? I built up my following, I built up my brand, I did a bunch of these, I went to some networking events, and I'm doing a little bit better than I was three years ago. A little bit better, right? Most of the businesses here are local businesses, right? Most of your clients are from here, right? Alongside with all the value and information that you provide, talk about your community every once in a while. Position yourself as the ambassador of Tucson, okay? Think about someone who's moving in from Pittsburgh because they work for Caterpillar and they want to buy a new house, right? And they go on Facebook and they search Realtors Tucson, right? Do we got a lot of Realtors in here? I'm going to hurt you all right now, mm -hmm. right? If you saw one business page for realtors, you saw 99% of them. Because what do they all post? Cynthia doesn't, she does a good job. What do all the realtors post? Closings or uh, listings, right? That's all they post. Then they'll say, yeah, I sold the house every four to six weeks. So I got all these listings, all these homes that are for sale, then handing the keys over to somebody every once in a while. What value and information is that providing me? If I have a great job and I'm moving to Tucson and I see that on Facebook, do I think I'm gonna have any connection with that realtor? No. No. But if I see that this realtor is like out and about going to all the local restaurants, which we all do, local coffee shops, which we all do, right? Providing the information about how the economy is doing well, how we're one of four doors or whatever, uh, top 19 destinations in 2019. Anybody see that? Mm -hmm. Crazy, huh? Did you see all the other cities on that? There's, it's like all over the world, but Tucson's one of them. Provide information about that, provide information about the new parks, the new school district, whatever it is, and I'm scrolling through that business page and I'm gonna move to Tucson I th I'm gonna think this person knows and cares about the community, right? So am I gonna do business with the person who has all these listings or the person who's an ambassador of Tucson? Who would you do business with? 
Raise a hand. The ambassador of Tucson or the person who just cares about putting money in their pocket? The ambassador. Right? So, create a Facebook page. Most of you have a Facebook page, right? Okay. So, just to kind of dot the I's, cross the T's on this, make sure all the information is filled out. There's a new section, relatively new, on the bottom right. It's your story section. A lot of people who have their business pages haven't realized that yet. That you can put a new picture in there and you can get a little more elaborate about your story. You have the about section when you create your Facebook page, but that story section, you can actually write a few paragraphs in there. Right? That's the biggest mistake that I've seen today. Profile and background pictures, make sure they look good. If you're looking for something to fit in that background picture, use canva.com. It's free. Okay? It has all these different templates and sizes. You could do a, a background for your Facebook. Your background for your Facebook and LinkedIn, if you have Twitter, are all different. Canva has all these dimensions for you, okay? Profile picture, you know, more likely put a picture of yourself. If not, then your logo. The background needs to reflect your business. You include a website address, but don't put too much on there, okay? Don't put too many words on there. Make it a nice, clean uh, picture, or you can even use a video there as well. It's kind of general stuff, inviting people to like your page, right? You can invite your friends to like your page. I see a lot of business pages that have like 13 likes and the people have 2,000 friends. Why haven't you invited your friends to like your page? Well, they're not my avatar. They're not my, yeah, but they may know somebody who needs your business, right? You know, one thing this weekend or this uh, Wednesday that Gary Vee was saying, and it's true. A lot of us don't want to post stuff because we're worried about what other people are going to think about us, right? Mm -hmm. Has anybody kind of come across that? I'm afraid to post this because I'm afraid of what my friends are going to say, right? How many people have had a business less than a year or two years? Most of us have been for, for a while. When I started my business, you know how many of my inner circle friends that I hang out with that I don't hang out with now? I don't hang out with Nobody wants to hang out with me that I hung out with three years ago, right? Because I was kind of, and I was also worried about what they're going to think about what I post now. Now that I don't have, have no friends, I can post whatever I want, <laughs> right? Uh, so get rid of your friends. Get rid of your friends, yeah. But don't worry about what your friends are going to think about what you're posting. You know, you have a business to run. You have a family to feed. Okay. Sean, yes. Wouldn't it make sense? Wouldn't you want to post something that would spark some type of engagement anyway? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. 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 Absolutely. You you want to put obviously, thank you guy. You you want do want to put posts that do create some conversation. Right? That do create not just the likes, but you want to ask them a question. Right? You could do a lot of powerful stuff on your guys' stuff, you know? So create that conversation put posts up there that are going to get people kind of upset over Facebook posts. I know a lot of this kind of general stuff, but if you just started, um, begin in the right areas, the right something section. Again, a formative post. Don't try to sell anything. Okay? Provide value and information. We'll get into selling and finding your target audience pretty soon. Okay? But you want to create that fan page again. You want to create a page where it's like, hey, my buddy has his business. Go check it out on Facebook. You know, you could find the, the answer to your problems or whatever it is on his page, I, I guarantee it. Please, proper grammar. A lot of small businesses <laughs> use a lot of uh, slang, you know? Instead of gotta, but you have to, right? Use proper grammar, please. It's a reflection on your business. If you want to use an article from another source, you know how if you copy that huge URL on top, you don't want that huge URL to look all messy in your post, right? So go to bitly.com, B-I-T-L-Y, copy and paste that huge URL so it's this big. So it's a lot more cleaner and professional looking in there, okay? Pictures and video do a lot more than just articles, okay? You'll get more organic reach with a picture and even a lot more with a video, okay? Tag other businesses if you can. If you found an article you want to share and it's talking about the top, you know, 20 restaurants in Tucson and one of them is your favorite, 
tag them in that article, you'll get more reach, right? You'll get about two or three times more reach if you tag another business, okay? And tagging is simply putting that symbol, typing it out. Not everybody's username is the same as their business name, so you may have to go to their business page and see what their username is and then tag them. But you'll get a lot more reach if you tag another business or two in your articles. Hashtags. A lot of people make the mistake of when they use hashtags, they use too many on Facebook. Use only one to three right now, okay? If you're on Instagram, you have to be cautious if you're sharing that post on Instagram to Facebook and you use a bunch of hashtags on Instagram to get rid of all those hashtags before you post it on Facebook. Okay? It'll see it as too spammy and you'll get zero reach on it. Okay? So just one to two, one to three hashtags, three at the very most on your Facebook. Okay? So I'm going to back up a little bit. Does everybody know what a hashtag is? Okay, hashtag, I never explain it right. But think of it as little magnets or little opportunities for people that are searching for a task consultant. They will go up in the top of Facebook and put task consultant. Oh, I see. Oh. And they're more apt to kind of find you. So that's like the journal articles say keywords. And that's what Perfect. Yeah. No more than one to three. I like to use hashtags as part of my branding, right? So if I'm, uh, like for myself, if I were to use a hashtag on one of my own posts, I'll put hashtag CMG just for branding purposes, even though no one searches really for CMG. But if I want someone to find social media marketer, I'll use hashtag on that, okay? But that's perfect, like keywords so people can find you. Response and engagement, what, what Guy was saying, you do want posts that, that create responses and engagement. Because obviously the more responses and engagement you get, the more people that you'll reach. On a typical post, if there's no response and engagement, and you have about 1,000 people that like your Facebook page, you may reach about 150, 175 people, maybe. But if you get some likes on there, and if you get some comments on there, you'll get a little bit more, okay? But what's even more important than that? Say you got three people that responded, nice post, I love this article, thanks for sharing the information. What's your job then? Yeah. If you don't respond, they're not going to continue to respond to your posts, right? There's a lot of businesses out there that get that. They'll have a great post, and then they don't reply back. I do a, one of my clients, I'm not going to say who it is. Again, I don't want to sell anything. One of my clients is a bakery. So I took a gazillion pictures of every little pastry and donut in there. And all I do is I post chocolate donuts for almost every other day and say, <laughs> You know, what kind of coffee would you like on this? And there's like 20 or 30 people every day responding to, mmm, yummy, love it, no, no, no. So yeah, you go in and like it and reply to every one of them. More and more engagement. They got about 1,500, 1,700 likes. Every post gets over 1,000 reach. <laughs> it's a picture of, you know, the little cherry turnover. Huh. And, and what do you think that does for It creates more top of mind awareness. Instead of going to Dunkin' Donuts, I'm gonna go to this bakery. Right? So yeah, so you're building brand awareness. They're always packed. Here, here, thank you, it reminded me of something. I was gonna get, get into this. Alongside with that, and with groups, 80-20 rule, right? What's the 80-20 rule? It applies to everybody in here, 80-20 rule. What is it? Right. Right? But also 80% of your revenue is coming from 20% of your clients, right? Everybody in here has come in here, how to get new clients, how to get new clients, how to get new clients. Your social media is as important to retain your clients as it is to find the new clients, right? Everybody should have a little secret group. I use this secret group, and I put all my clients in this little secret group and I communicate with them two or three times a week, right? And we just talk about business, entrepreneurship, social media, right? I'm giving them all the inside information. There may or may not be a realtor in town who has this little secret group, and he gives them all the listings ahead of time. 
he gives them all the information a couple of days ahead before he posts his information on there, right? So you're retaining your clients by creating this VIP status for them, right? So what do all these people in this realtor's little group, what do they do for them? Today's social media is your word of mouth, right? This guy sells, I don't know, almost cost a lot of homes, yeah. right? And it's because he takes care of his 20% that has built up his business over the last 20 years. And he's work, he uses his social media beautifully to do that. All these people in this little group that he has gets all this information ahead of time, gets all these ideas ahead of time, all these investment opportunities ahead of time in real estate, right? So all these people in that group get all that beforehand, before you even post and make it public, right? If you have like that 1%, I would create that group, get your current clients in there and give them kind of the behind the scenes stuff on investment stuff that's gonna come ahead of time. Because all those guys and that 1%, who do they hang out with? They're not hanging out with me. They're hanging out with other one percenters, right? Your social media is as important to find new clients as it is to retain your, your same clients. Hmm. That 20%. Group, you have a secret group and you share that. They don't see who each other are, is that right? Unfortunately, they can't if they respond. Okay. okay? Yeah. Because my group has some people that I wish, but I know they don't. Good question, though. Just create another group. Right? Just create it. If you get people that conflict and personalities don't like each other, create another one. Okay? That's an excellent question, though. Okay? Your social media is as important to retain that 20%, bringing in that 8% of your revenue as it is to find new clients. I have not actively marketed for a new client in over a year. What's the one of the first things I said to you guys today? I'm not looking for a new client, right? But I use that group and I meet people and all my new business the last 12 months have been just from referrals. That's it. Facebook Live. I love Facebook Live, right? If you have an open house or if you have an event, you have a, a new listing. Cynthia, you've done this on Instagram a few times, right? Yes. Yeah, they're great. Hers are great because they're very informative. She's actually happy. She smiles on her Instagram Live, right? I have a hard time doing that. But the, the one thing about it is to be a little rehearsed but not overly rehearsed. My best Facebook Lives has been, I was helping a video company and they're doing a video of a, uh, a limo company down in Sonoida. And we're filming this limo coming up over the hills in Sonoida, right? Going off to the vineyards. And the first time we did the video, a, um, a, bo a, well, a border patrol pulled the limo over. And I got all this on Facebook Live, right? A lot of reach and engagement on that one, right? So take two. This time, um, <laughs> they were coming over the hills when they caught up to this truck with a bunch of hay and the hay fell over and all over the highway right in front of the limo, right? So I'm getting all kinds of people talking about it and engaging and watching this Facebook Live because, you know, there's two screw-ups, right? Third time they finally get it, right? So I'm continuing to do it, but the, the uh, guy handling the drone, right? We're all waiting for the, because I was going to end it with the drone coming in. The drone got stuck in a tree, <laughs> right? But those are my best three Facebook Lives ever. <laughs> so don't worry that it's super polished, right? People want to do business with people that they're alike, but they can relate to as well, right? <laughs> I, they're hilarious, yeah. So can, with Facebook Live, because I don't know how to use that as well, when you put a post out there, mm -hmm. okay, you don't like it, you take it off, it's deleted. Is it the yeah. same thing with the Facebook yeah. Live? But yeah. But whoever's seen it has already seen it, right. you can still take it down. Right, you okay. can. It's live at that moment, but you have an option not to share, um, share it, right? Okay. But even if it's, if it's bad, who cares, right? But another good thing is like all your followers, you know, if any of you are following a page right now, they did a Facebook Live right now, you're not going to see it but you'll get that notification and it's more likely you'll see it later. Okay. You may only get a handful of people that actually see that Facebook Live at that time, but over the next week, you'll see more and more and more and more, more views, okay? Do you have to be following that person? You have to be following, yeah. You gotta be, they have to like your page to see it, right? 
at the very least, they're going to see a notification from your business that you're alive. And more likely than not, they're going to see what you did. Okay? Can you share it if someone else's Facebook? Like yeah. That? Yeah, I think I'm 90% sure. I'll double check after we're done, but I think you can share it on your personal one. Yeah. Maybe a random question. No. Uh, what is your experience in the Facebook Live mm -hmm. of responding on the Facebook Live video to the people responding on the... Great question. And I, I used to help a, a radio guy out, right? And I was kind of the Facebook person. And the more you respond to the people or just say hi to all the people that are coming in, you'll get more engagement and that they're more apt to stay on there longer, right? You want, you know, 10, 12 people watching at one time, not zero, <laughs> right? But the way to do that is to kind of say, hey, Fred, thanks for joining in. But if you can get somebody else to kind of do that for you, then you're not, well, for me, I won't lose my train of thought, mm -hmm. right? One thing when you're doing these Facebook Lives, right, and if you're doing like this, don't look directly into the camera. Look into your, your, your camera camera. Guy. <laughs> Guy has phenomenal videos, but you gotta remember, if you're on your laptop, the camera's up here at the top, right? Don't look directly into the screen. Okay, we've all done that. We've all made the mistakes. But, you know, instead of having that person who's kind of looking down at you, it'll be more like looking into your eyes, okay? If you're doing it like this for some reason, your camera's right here. Okay? Is there, is there a certain length of time that you're trying to keep the video? Great question. Great question. The general rule of thumb, a lot of people say, yeah, about two minutes. But if you're engaging and you have a great interview with Kay going on about stuff and there's laughing and you're providing great information and a lot of people are staying on there and engaged, then why set yourself to a limit? Right? If it's in, like those that entertaining videos of the limo, those are like three, four, five minutes long, right? People staying engaged. Don't limit yourself to a 30 second commercial like a lot of us are trained to do, right? Any questions on these? I have one more. Yes. Uh, so one of my clients has multiple locations and it's gonna open a new location and have a grand opening. Mm -hmm. Can all their Facebook pages tie into that as well? They have multiple locations? They have multiple Facebook pages. Do they have one main page? No. See, that, that's, that's a great question. Excellent, excellent question. Because if you have more than one location, if you have that one main page, then you get Facebook Live from then, and then they'll go on all the other locations. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. So there's a way to do that. Again, you know, I can kind of walk you through that. But basically, you need, you need to make one of those pages the main page. It won't have an address, but then uh, you'll have to recreate that location with the address. So it'll be like one main page and then all your locations down here. Right. So if anybody's planning on having multiple locations in the future, keep that in mind, okay? But whatever you post on that main page will be posted on every other page, oh, every location cool. page, yeah. But whatever you post on one location page won't be shared everywhere, okay? Grand openings, if you are gonna have an office open up pretty soon, create an event and Facebook Live it, okay? What your program should look like. In general, you could post every day. You're not going to oversaturate it. People, people won't see your post every single day, even, even if they are liking your page. If they engage in your page, they're more apt to see it because it'll be higher on their newsfeed. But don't be afraid of posting too often, okay? I have a client that I was posting for every day, every day. He calls me and tells me, Sean, you're posting too much. I'm like, what? I can't give away the service, but we only use this guy's service once every 18 to 24 months, right? We need to build up that brand awareness on him, that name recognition, right? Yeah, you're posting too much, Sean. My wife sees it every single day, that what you're posting. Well, yeah, because your wife likes and engages in every single day, so it's more higher on the new, her news feed. Uh, she's telling me you're posting every day, right? So now I get to do half the work at the same price for him. <laughs> which is great for me, but it's the wrong strategy, right? Don't be afraid to post every day. You guys all have stuff you could share every day, okay? We're gonna get into the budget stuff right now. But you wanna complement your daily post with, with your combination of boosts, promotion page, and ad sets. We're gonna get into that right now, okay? Plan your video ahead of time that provides value. And oh, what not to post. What's some good things 
not to post. If you want to go out of business tomorrow, what should you post? There you go. What happened to that one restaurant like six months ago? Oh, man. Right? Again, I like craft beer, but you rarely, you won't see me on my personal or my business page drinking the Stone IPA. You won't. You'll see me as the good old all-American type of guy, whatever, whether it's on business or my personal side. Do not put anything political, right? Religion. Nothing, yeah, nothing to do with religion, right? We are overly sensitive these days. Tony Robbins talked about, I'm not gonna share the story because then I'll curse it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're, I apologize if I offend somebody, but we're a little bit oversensitive these days, right? Um, I grew up in the military as a military brat, and all my friends and family, and everybody's from all over the country. We call each other every name in the book. It is all out of love and affection, right? You can't do this on your business page. So religion, politics, and there's one more I always forget. Disparaging comments Disparaging about comments. anything or yeah. anyone. Yeah. Always be positive, right? And honestly, if you're always positive about stuff, compared to all the negative stuff that we see on social media, you're gonna stand out tremendously, right? Any comments, suggestions about that? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I was trying to get past this slide real quick. <laughs> There's us, uh, some guys in town, they're brothers, and they've got a few restaurants in town. And they started off posting a lot of stuff about all the fancy cars they were driving and all yeah. the trips they were taking. Yeah. I actually yeah. went on there and I said, hey, um, and they stuff, and yeah. you know, just like, look how much money I have. Right. So I went on there and I told them in a private message, I made a comment like, you know, you should re consider what you're posting. And after that, he started posting things about volunteering at places. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You, 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 yeah. Uh, that was, yeah. Uh, you were 100% correct. Um, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, will. Um, put that stuff and it's not reality. It's not reality. You see it more on Instagram than on Facebook where people are like, you know, I'm traveling to Brazil and this and that and they just went to the airport to hang out, you know? <laughs> but it, it's, but are, are they, they want your business and it's a perfect example of what really not to post, right? right? Yeah, because it puts them up here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know one thing, and this is more of a LinkedIn strategy than maybe Facebook, but don't be afraid to kind of put your failures every once in a while, but how you grew from it. You know, I had a lot of posts on LinkedIn where it's like, I fell on my face today, big time. But this is what I learned about it. And I get more comments and, you know, people at, you know, talking about that than, you know, all the positive stuff, or just as much, I should say. You know, it shows that you're human, shows you have humility, and people are more apt to like, what do you do? I don't know, sir. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying people are going to ask you, what do you do? Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, I'd rather do business with someone like you than someone's posting, I just sold a $7 million house and they really right. didn't. Right? It's more approachable. Exactly. Yeah. 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 This is the stuff that I think most of you, if you go to that free 90-minute follow-up, this is probably the stuff we're going to get really into more so in that. But let me give you as an overview on this as best as I can in the period of time that I have, right? A few months ago, you'll probably get away with like $50 or $60 budget a month. Right now, it's probably like $60 to $80 a month, right? So keep that in mind as we talk through this, right? On Facebook. On Facebook, yes. There's, think of it as three different types of investments you can make on Facebook that I'm going to recommend. There's a lot more, but just to get you guys started, just to get you guys on a program, to get your feet wet, right? If you want more likes, which likes on your page is kind of the sexy thing, but it's not everything. Reach and engagement is, okay? Okay, but if you want more likes, then on your business page, along the left side, you go down to um, ads and promotions, you click on that, and you'll see a bunch of different options. The promote page option, you could put in what I do, with my clients is about 10% a month and to get into more likes by promoting their page. That's the purpose of promote page, to get more likes and more followers on your business page, okay? If you want more reach on a particular post, say you did a video with, you interviewed somebody or you did a video on your own, 
and you're seeing it has a lot of region engagement, you want to put some money into that. Put that other 10% into promoting a post or boosting a post, okay? If you get a post that you think is spectacular and no one loves it, don't make the mistake of putting some money into that. Don't do it, okay? Can you briefly touch on the difference between likes and reaching? Yes, likes are the people that follow your page. You know, I have 1,800 likes on my business page. Those are 1,800 people that follow my page, okay? So when I say likes and following, they're synonymous, okay? The same thing, okay? About 80% of my client's budget I'll put into ad sets. This is where we can get um, narrowed down to that 1% for you. Everybody else, and I learned this from a guy who manages hundreds of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads a month. And I had him critique what I was doing, right? About six months ago, I was looking for a new car, right? I went on Google to search new cars in Tucson. That same day, where did I see ads for new cars? Facebook. And Instagram, right? Even though it was Google, I was seeing these ads on Facebook and Instagram. I like to think I'm a big shot in some areas because I could have a little phone call with Facebook about every two or three weeks and I'll pick their brains about a bunch of stuff, right? The creepiness of Facebook is beyond what anybody else realizes in here. <laughs> it is what it is, okay? So for most of us, when we go into targeting the audience, right behind the NSA, right? I think they're ahead of NSA. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it's, it, it's crazy how transparent they are with me. They're like, yeah, no, 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 I'm like, wow. So for most of us, let Facebook's creepiness and algorithms work for you, okay? Don't spend all the time targeting a specific, you know, between, you know, don't, don't keyword volleyball players only, right? Because if you do that on that little arrow, if you ever boost it, it's going to be all in the red. But if you just keep an age and an area, 99% of you guys, that's all you guys have to do. People are looking for financial services or homes or whatever. Whether it's on Google or whatever website they looked for, let Facebook's creepiness do the work for you, right? There's a lot more stuff we can get into about lookalike audiences and all this other stuff, but just to keep it simple, to get you guys going, just worry about age and, and area, okay? If you want to narrow it down to zip codes, you could just put in the zip codes. But generally, most of the time for my clients, I'm just putting the radius around Tucson or whatever city they're in, okay? With yours though, if you only have that 1%, you're, you're not just looking for clients in Tucson. No, it's nationwide. Nationwide. So what I would do is under the, you can edit, you can edit by income and whatever that bottom line income up is up, and then you can put money into a nationwide campaign, not just Tucson. Oh, I see. Okay? It's way more expensive. A little bit, yes. But if you're working with that clientele, right? What's expensive? Right. So if you do that lower, say it's 250 or whatever, and you target just Tucson, it's gonna be way in the red and you won't be able to run that ad. But if you do coast to coast with everybody making a quarter million up, then it'll be kind of probably, hopefully, more in the green. You may have start with your bottom and then kind of work down on your income a little bit. Okay? Okay. All your ads, especially the first ads, your ad set, you could do six different ads, up to six. You can do six unique pictures, six unique headlines, six unique p content. Right? What I would do, if I were you, I would do six unique ones with different pictures, different headlines, different content, everything. Right? Run those for $2 a day for two days. So you spend $4 now, right? Don't buy yourself a Starbucks one day and you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll have all the data and the information you'll need after two days. You'll see that these two ads did great and these other four really sucked. So you can go on there and you can click to turn those four off and then you can put the rest of your budget into those two or three that did really, really well, 
right? Our buddy Brian Lawson said it perfectly. I'm not a great marketer. I'm a pretty good tester though. That's all when it comes to your ads. You're testing things out to see what works, to see what's pushing people's buttons. Even today with all my clients and all the ads I've ever run, I'm only half about half the time. I'm only right about half the time what I think is going to do well and what's not going to do well. Okay? So don't always presume that this one's going to do great and this one over here will just run it just to run it. Okay? So again, after those two days, you spend four dollars, turn off the ones that did not get the reach and the engagement and the calls to action that you wanted, and keep the ones on. This is something I learned this week um, from Facebook. This uh, person said to run your ads no more than six days. So put the rest of your money into maybe those four to six days. After six days, it's just gonna go down. And I'll be honest, I was making that mistake. I was running them for a little bit too long. Okay, so if you have a $100 budget, use that extra $96 in those next four to five days, okay? Pull out your Facebook and you'll see one up. Uh, an ad would be uh, a picture, right? And, uh, I mean like something for, say, in real estate. Um, sure um, yeah. In, 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 yeah. But, but, but you can do, you know, first time home buyers, VA loans. Um, we want to buy another property, right? And run unique ads for each one of those. So another thing about these ads, what are people going to do when they see these ads? And this is what makes our 90 minute session make a lot of sense. But what are people going to do? They see your ad today, you run one today, you go home and run an ad. They're going to check out your Facebook page. When's the last time you posted? A few days. Right. Been a few days and before that, how long? If you're not consistent in posting, you run these ads and they check out your Facebook page and they see you're just running ads to just try to get money today, right now, and you haven't been consistent, you haven't been engaged, they're not likely to stick with you. So from now until the 27th, start posting almost every day, right? Start getting some ideas for your ads, and on the 27th, I'll let you know. It's like, hey, if this is going to work, this won't work. Do this, do that. But have some posts up there now so they see that you are engaged. If you see a business page and they haven't posted since 2016, I'm not going to do business with them, right? So run your ads so when they go to your page and go to your website, maybe, they see that you're engaged, they see that you're involved. I just mentally have ads stuck in my head as I'm selling something. <laughs> and this is the part where all the other stuff, posting daily is the branding and marketing part of it. This is the potential sales part of it. This is providing more leads for you guys. There's, especially with real estate, if you're in real estate at probably financial services, I'm sure you already have that privacy policy on your website, right? I've had the hardest time with a client from not getting as approved when they want a lead gen form on it because Facebook's saying that they're going to use that third party information for other purposes, right? So make sure you have a privacy policy on your website. Again, you create up to six, you test them, two bucks a day, and then the lifetime of that about a week. Make it less than a week, make it about five days. And you can have call to action on these ads too. If you want to direct them to a website or you want them to call you, or you want to direct them to a lead gen form, okay? Be very, very open and very creative about this, and more likely than not on Facebook, you can accomplish it, okay? All right, so this is not that current of a slide, but don't worry about all this recent stuff about Facebook. It's still where everybody's attention is at. There's still two billion people on there, okay? You're gonna use the combination of those daily posts with a, daily market, with a monthly marketing budget that you can afford and that's going to be your strategy. Instagram. But on Instagram, it's your opportunity to tell your day-to-day -day story. As corny as it is, when I didn't have my office, I was working at local coffee shops, and I would take a picture of me and my local my coffee with my laptop, and I get all kinds of likes and yay for you, stuff like that, right? It's all part of my brand, right? When you're over out in a local event, local function, Take a little picture of yourself, have someone take a picture for you, show people that you're engaged, tell your story, right? The big thing, well, there's 800 million users on this. Also engage when someone actually does reply to you on one of your pictures, make sure you thank them and reply them back. 
hashtags. How many hashtags can you use on a post on Instagram? Hmm? Oh, cool. How many? On Instagram. On Instagram. 30. <laughs> 30. So almost as many as you want, right? And use as many, use up to 30 on every post if you can. And you're going to say, how do I do that? You go to this all-hashtag.com and put in real estate, put in legal advice, put in whatever, and it'll give you the top 30 hashtags for those. You click on a button that says copy and you click back to your post and say paste and then you got your 30 hashtags, okay? Don't do that on every single post, mix them up because if you do that all the time, it's gonna knock you down, knock you down, knock you down. So mix those up. But that's an easy way to get up to 30 hashtags in about 10 seconds, okay? Not all of them apply. Like when I do social media, sometimes it'll say social media gal, social media chick and all that. Take those out. I'm not a social media gal. So we'll use the ones that apply and fill in some other ones in there, okay? And how many do you recommend? 30. Oh, use all 30? Oh yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. So Facebook Just because I don't do it all the time. <laughs> up to three, yeah, and then up to 30 on Instagram. You will see your following grow tremendously. You'll see your reach growing tremendously. If you do that and use all the other functions on Instagram that you can, you know, do your video, do your story. Is that the same on LinkedIn or no? As far as <laughs> hashtags? No, 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 no. No, I would I use maybe up to three on LinkedIn as well. Yes. Functionality question. So if yes. you were to use Instagram to post to Facebook for you, could you log into Facebook, edit the post, subtract yes. the yes. 27? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it will yep. Yeah. Yep. Right before you post it on there, you'll see your content on there. Just get rid of 27 of those hashtags. You see that mistake all the time. Right. All the time. Yeah. Right? But it's a good way to save your, you know, to manage your time, right? Um, Instagram stories, you use that a lot, don't you, Cynthia? Yeah. Have you seen your number of followers grow through the roof? It does, yeah. Yeah. Mm, for sure. What else do you use? Um, I post just stuff on my Instagram. Mm. You do a lot of lives, right? Mm. Well, I do more stories than lives. Yeah. I actually have not done a live yet because I'm still nervous. Mm. So I'm still... Yeah, don't be nervous. I'm trying to get out of that by doing the stories yeah. because I can still tell myself, okay, should I post this yeah. or send it to someone? Yeah, use the boomerang every once in a while, I even though it's kind of corny, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. When you do live, does it lose your little, you know, your, your avatar all the way to the front? So you, yes, yeah, great, great point, Joe, thank you. Yeah. When you do a live, all the people that you're following, <coughs> it's gonna move that little, you know, Joe did a live in front of all the other stories that you can see, all the lives come in first, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I love it, you know, if you want, you're not gonna gain a lot of following on Facebook quickly. You're gonna gain it on Instagram, right? What we're talking about today with Facebook and Instagram, this doesn't apply to you, it won't, right? The more I'm thinking about it, it won't. For me. But, <laughs> but use them together. Don't think of it as two separate programs. Use these together, right? the value and information on your Facebook, telling your story and telling who you are on Instagram. Instagram opportunities, again, you cannot saturate Instagram. Post two, three, four times a day if you can. If, if you're here today and you go to a networking event, you're doing something later and you do that, those are three, four, five opportunities that you could say, yeah, I was here today with these people. I was networking, I was doing this, I was doing that. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and separate yourself from all your competition and put yourself as, what do you do? Uh, finance. Yeah, finance. yeah. So you gotta go up against Guy, right? <laughs> so, you know, you have, to, you have to separate yourself. There's some, 95% of the people in Tucson do a mediocre job in their social media. If you do what I'm asking you to do today, you don't think you're gonna separate yourself by this much as opposed to everybody else? And what they are posting is wrong. What they are posting is 13 hashtags on a Facebook post and they're not getting any reach. Or they're not using Instagram correctly. They're not doing a Facebook Live. It's that social media mentality first. You're not in financial services. Today in our era, you're a social media consultant for your own business first slash finance. Like if I'm doing stories, do you say maybe one or two a day or? 
Try a three to five. Three to five story? Yeah. Yeah. What time do you get up in the morning and have your cup of coffee and, you know? I mean, as a realtor, I mean, you got to do all kinds of stuff to stay ahead of the game, don't you? You got a few people out there that are realtors today in Tucson about what, 3,000 realtors in Tucson? So who cares if you do a six to eight stories a day? You know, you got to separate yourself. And how much is it going to cost you to do that? Nothing. Have you noticed, um, is there a difference between just writing like a regular post on Facebook or adding like the, you know, how they have like that background that you can add and making the font a different font and things like that? In, in my opinion, like for your services, I wouldn't do that. Just keep it clean and professional. There are some businesses it does apply to. You know, there's some businesses where I can kind of cut loose a little bit and show a little bit of a dry sense of humor, but if it applies, you know. I, I do, honestly, I do business with you because you're professional, you know what you're talking about. Display that in your, you know, show the person on your Instagram, show your grind every day. How many hours a day do you guys put in every day? I see you guys everywhere, right? No but, <laughs> but how many people know that though, right? You gotta, you know, Instagram I think is gonna separate and LinkedIn. We can talk about LinkedIn. More. Preference on stories versus posts on Instagram? Doing both. Doing both. Yeah. I'll be honest, normally when I do one of these things, I say, yeah, just try to post three times a week, try to do this, try to do that. No. Almost cursed again. Yeah, yeah. Go all out. <laughs> Go all out. 